Joining me now to discuss his research that's featured in Breakthrough and his work with psychedelic drugs, it's Dr. Matthew Johnson, an associate professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Welcome to the show. I think this is such a fascinating area because, unfortunately, uh, psychedelic drug research really halted in the 50s and 60s with drug hysteria. Yeah. Where did you pick up the mantle? When did you become interested? I was an undergraduate in college when I discovered this this history that was really kind of buried at that point of these really promising therapeutic um, uh, potentials for these psychedelic drugs, mainly LSD. And so it had really taken a few decades for enough time to pass for the hysteria, you know, to blow over yeah. and for this research to be allowed again. And it's taken a lot of lobbying by, by various groups uh, to the government and to research institutions to yeah. allow uh, these studies to go forward. But you have found some really profound effects. And, and it, it's not people just dropping acid and hanging right. out at uh, Grateful Dead and Fish shows. Right. You know, this is a therapeutic setting. But what have you found that surprised you? We have found a really high success rate in people looking to quit smoking that have tried other things to quit smoking. We've conducted an open-label pilot study, so we're at the earlier phase, phase of research, but yeah. it was very promising enough for us to move forward with a larger study funded by the Hefter Research Institute, mm. comparing it specifically in a randomized trial to nicotine patch treatment, yeah. both with the same cognitive behavioral therapy, and it is a medication and enhanced therapeutic approach, yeah. not just giving someone the psychedelic drug. No, and, and they're very careful about uh, the, the setting, and as you have pointed yeah. out, the therapy starts before you very actually much. take the psychedelic and continues afterward, but it, it seems to have some profound change on the brain, but also the psychological context. Explain what happens. Well, people describe these events, especially when they're well conducted like this, as a major life event. It's more like you know, going to another culture or having a child, getting married, these kind of major life events. And people typically uh, rate these experiences as, as amongst the most personally meaningful or spiritually significant events of their lives. Wow. And those types of examples aren't, you know, atypical when you talk to people who have used psychedelic drugs, even in recreational um, settings. So if we harness that and actually you know, put in place the right therapeutic approaches to enhance that effect, and yeah. we have the, the monitoring to make sure we avoid the, the real risks that are involved, but that are squarely addressable in a research setting, then we can get some good outcomes. Is this the future of treating addiction and PTSD as you see it? I think it's a major component of that treatment. We have hit the wall when yeah. it comes to treating addiction and disorders like depression mm -hmm. and like PTSD for the last few decades. And so the psychedelic drugs broadly defined really represent a major way, a powerful way to manipulate the brain that has some risks involved, but yeah. they're very promising. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get back into this research for decades, so it's a really exciting time. Well, you are on the forefront of something that, that really could be stunning and transformative. I can't wait to watch tonight's episode and hear more about your work. So please come back and keep us informed. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you. It. All right. Very good.